Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. A revolution is happening in the world of cloud storage, and it's called Lucid Link. <music> All right, we're going to go through a few things, including connecting to my buddy, Dave Helmley. He's 500 miles away, and I'm going to show you how Lucid Link Storage, which we're both running, seems like it's right here in the same room. So ladies and gentlemen, my former manager, when I used to work at, at Adobe, Dave Helmley. How are you doing, Dave? Hey, Colin. Awesome to be on your show. Yeah, I thought this would be a great way to uh, introduce people to Lucid Link, where we have a real workflow, where someone is not in the same building. Absolutely, I you know this is a great product. You know, um, as you and I were saying, geez, just a couple of months ago, you know, what's a great solution for remote editors that don't require logging into another computer? <laughs> you know, sync and share, which we'll we'll talk about, but just. What's a yeah. great way to let creatives be creatives? And I, I, I think what they'll see today could be that answer. Exactly. And, and the, the, probably the most confusing thing to get past is the simplicity. You know, when you first look at, at Lucid Link and you're comparing it to Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, all of those, which seem like cloud storage, sure. Why is this different? Well, the simplicity is it's the only solution I've ever seen that acts like a local drive. I, I, absolutely, and, and we should let the audience know that when I first discovered you know, this product and started showing it around Adobe, they should know you were one of the first people that I called because right. uh, Colin and I always check each other on, on technology and just sort of say, look, this doesn't make any sense to me that it could be <laughs> this easy. Uh, yeah. Help me validate this. And I think that's just one great way that, that we work together. Because as you said, it really is, it's easy. And you have to kind of remove yourself, like you said, from what you think you know about cloud storage and yes. really go back into what you want, which is like, look, I have a little local server here or I have a folder share that I might do with, with someone else, which is easy enough on, on Mac or Windows. How do I emulate um, a local drive, much less, you know, a local, you know, sort of network attached uh, storage device, which people may or may not have, as we said, but you'll see that Lucid Link works just like it's a USB drive or any local drive and all the yeah. Adobe apps and really any app just looks at it as a local drive, as you'll see. Right. So, so here's what we're going to do. Dave has some files on his server in his house. I'm 500 miles away. He's going to copy a bunch of video files. So we're going to put together a, a, a quick workflow between the two of us. And, and once he puts those files into the Lucid Link share, we're going to flip to me to see how fast they show up. So um, as you see, I've already got my Lucid Link volume mounted. And again, just to make that, that apparent, you see I have all the remote apps here. You just click on Lucid Link and it automatically logs you in if you have that option checked. So it already knows my password. And as you can see here, I'm on the Adobe volume, which is just the name. Think of that as like the name of the of the hard drive or, or the storage volume. And then uh, I have my own demo space here that you know I could use for whatever I need to. But Colin and I um, have, have a shared space together where Colin and I are working on this uh, production called Awakening. And it uh, looks like Colin's already added some music there. And Colin and I was busy this weekend getting all the, all the video folders together. So hopefully that's the way you wanted those. And nice. And I'm going to go ahead and just drag and drop this into the Awakening folder. And what you'll see is Lucid Link is going to get this ready for me to mm -hmm. edit in about 10 seconds. And now it's ready to go. Now, I can go ahead and start, you know, I can launch Premiere, start working on a project. And what it's doing is it's already set up the file path um, for me to edit. And as you'll notice, if I come over here, you know, I am running on AWS here in Northern Virginia. And we'll let Colin wants to mention a few things on that. One of the things about Lucidlink, it's incredibly fast and efficient compared to some of the other uh, solutions that are out there. So one of the test columns they might want to do is say, look, well, I use this 
cloud service provider, upload, time it, and then do the same test with Lucidlink and compare the difference. So there's the, <laughs> there's the files. All of those video files are now local. That's how quick they were showing up directly in here. So I, I can uh, preview these and play these right now. And Colin, th those are playing in real time for you, just in case there's any frame drop during their recording. Yeah, exactly. Because because I'm running Camtasia, I'm running t uh, Microsoft Teams, and I'm running uh, you know this desktop uh, file manager at the same time. So that's how easy it is. And if you look over on the left hand side, uh, everything shows up. So there's my regular C drive, my D drive, and there's my Lucid drive right in here. And you notice that you see, I can see my space, but I can't see the other space that Dave showed. And that's because part of Lucid Link is all of the security that's built in. Dave can turn on and off the stuff that I get to see. So it's, he, he knows that I'm not going to accidentally find other folders or see other things that I shouldn't be able to see. Colin, that's a good point because it has full administration rights. Um, I, you know, I'm the root user, so I get to control, um, you know, what you see and, and what you don't see. And for those people that need to know, you know, it does have SSO, uh, Active Directory, yeah. you know, all of those types of security things. But we're trying to keep it really simple today. Yeah. All right. So. Here's the Awakenings folder. The music is in there. The video is in there. I'm going to go to Premiere Pro. Uh, you need to add, by the way, weren't you working on voiceovers? Uh, oh, yeah, the voiceover. You're right. So I'll drag the voiceover into here. And the copy that you saw, and you can see it has a little up arrow, and the up arrow will disappear as soon as it's, it's done. And I, I'm just going to let let them know that I have complete access to your awakening file right now because it just popped yeah. up on my screen, nice and quick. Right. Okay. So in Premiere Pro, I'll grab a new project, and when I browse, you can see it shows up right there. So it, there's no guessing involved. It just looks like another drive, and it, you can see it's showing up down here also. And by the way, Colin, since you mentioned that, let's just mention that for Windows users, you see exactly what you would expect to see on a Windows volume. As a Mac user, I see exactly what I would expect on the Mac. And by the way, it does also support Linux for the people uh, out there that have some special things going on, maybe with visual effects uh, or something. And I do think that that's great that you know you don't have to have any special app for uploading and downloading. Once you just use yeah. Lucid Link to log in, you see it the way Windows or Mac, and again, Linux, would want you to see that. And I think that's a huge difference in the way they present uh, something as complex as cloud storage. Because as you and I have said, it works like a local drive. Yeah. So here's the project I just saved. I saved it in to the Lucid uh, space right there. So you're not running that local, right? It's only on I am Lucid not. Link. Right. So now in media uh, browser, same thing. I'll go to Lucid Link. It's just like a freaking drive. So now I can grab all of these and import them from 500 miles away, and they'll just show up. So there they are. There's all the video files, everything set, ready to go. This is the part that can't be overstated. It's what was the learning curve for this? Zero. I just worked like I normally worked. Two minutes ago, I didn't have a drive. Now I have a drive. I work as if I took this new Awakenings drive, plugged it in, and I have access to everything. And so by the next, way, you, you can't really... Uh, overstate that, Colin, because I think when you and I first started this, I started the conversation with help me, my head hurts. Because yeah. as a technology guy, I'm always trying to figure out where the bits are coming and going. You have to kind of just park your thoughts there and just go through and edit like you're doing here before you worry about how is it doing this. 
Yeah, exactly. So here I, I've just imported another Premiere Pro project into, uh, I call this one Awakening Live, and I just brought this in just so you could see my edit uh, in here because I didn't want to have to, uh, you know, wait for someone to, to uh, do an edit. So, okay, so there everything is. It's now playing from here, and this same project is a Premiere Pro project. So let's, to work better with Dave, I'm gonna turn this into a team project just by going to the edit menu, team project, convert this to a team project. Uh, and it's telling me you're attempting to convert this with unsaved changes. So I'm gonna save those changes. And there it is. So you might you might put like start start of project or something under under description there, which is always a good habit for the users column that haven't really started with team projects. Th this will keep a chronological sort of time machine type uh, look of of your edits over over time. Oh, okay, that that's a good uh, thing for sure. Okay, so I'll click OK, and you'll see something show up down here in the bottom left. There's me, and now I can add another user. And I'll add Dave. That takes any Creative Cloud email that you know to invite anyone to, uh, to a team project now. So do I have to hit invite? So go ahead and click invite. Now what's okay. gonna happen so I, I get a notification, by the way, not only on my computer, I also get it on my Apple Watch, which is kind of ah. awesome. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come over here and I'm gonna go to Creative Cloud and I'm going to accept Colin's invite. So now, just to make sure we're all in the same place, I'm gonna close, let me just start here. I'm gonna open a team project and it looks like I was just invited start of project, which is why it's wow. always good to put the description uh, just a couple of minutes ago or a minute ago. Colin's gonna, gonna uh, check that in uh, now. So one of the first things Colin has to do, so I'm gonna stop, stop sharing here. So Colin, share your screen. By the way, we, uh, what you need to do is see the up arrow down in the bottom. Oh yep. yeah. So you have to, to do that. And then when you do that, the, the comment's going to be share assets or however you want to put under the comments, because that's, that's the first time I, I get a chance. I've been invited to the project. Now Colin's giving me... Um, now, the reason, by the way, we do that, you're giving me control of the assets. The reason we do it that way is Colin's alerted me, hey, Dave, I want you on the team to edit. But he might be still putting folders together and maybe doing a rough cut or a string out uh, at the you know at the same time. So now I know I'm invited to the edit. Now I have a, hey you've got changes coming from Colin. And again, I just want to also show people that this is a great feature in team projects. I know that if I wake up with my coffee in the morning and I got things to do, hey Colin's on on um, the project right now. He and I are both online. Right. It would show nice. offline. So I'm going to go ahead and just say, let me get those changes. Looks like it's got 51 items. As you can tell, Colin and I have been busy. And uh, this is really just team projects right now updating its database with, the, with those assets. And at this point, I can double click and uh, I might want to just go ahead and um, play this out. I want to take a good look at what Colin's doing. Thousands of years. We looked look to the sky. sky. For some, For some reason, reason. Now, Colin, I'm going to go ahead and just do the dog ears thing, that, which will give them an idea of the frame rate. So Control Shift F11 or Command Shift F11 on Mac, just to show on. you that it's very responsive. 1920 by 1080. It's a full quality, um, you know, edit. So it's not been down resed or anything. It tells me the codecs that you're using. And I can just go ahead uh, and hit play. So we strapped three astronauts on the six stories of dynamite. And, and start. The stories of dynamite. And blast. So really very, very responsive. And as you can tell, Colin, it's not dropping 
any frames, just like it's a local drive. And we should also yeah. mention just on for a brief second, we find that 20, uh, 20 megs up, 20 megs down is a good 1920, 1080 experience. And I think, Colin, that's doable for most users that are out there. Yeah. For 4K edits, because I'm sure we're going to get questions on that. You know, a lot of customers that I've been working with tell me that a solid workflow is 100 up and 100 down. Um, uh, I have a gig up and a gig down, so I, I have plenty of elbow room. Um, how about you, Colin? What's what's your bandwidth look? I just upgraded, so I'm a gig down, thirty up. Okay, so so thir so thirty up. You you might struggle a little with with four K. You'd have to see that. Of course, it also depends on what are you doing with the with the four with the four K edit. And uh, the other thing we should mention is what type of codec is it? Because if it won't play decent on like a standard you know, drive, um, then, then, uh, you know, lucid link may, may have a problem paying, playing it back, but for pro res and most codecs and things like that, look at the megabits per second and, mm -hmm. uh, and see, and see what that looks like. All right. Back to you, Colin. Here's to me, something that really brings home how different lucid link is in an adobe workflow we've already shown on the desktop where it shows up i've showed in media and uh, or the media browser in premiere pro uh, but i want to show you or show the folks because you already know this Th that right there should tell you everything this is media encoder and you can see there's my c drive d drive and there's my lucid link drive directly inside there a and i i mentioned this is a revolution uh and you're seeing a lot of big customers uh, oh, across yeah. the board starting to adopt this. And, and these are customers that, that maybe they already have storage. So that's the, the, uh, the other revolution is like Lucid Link is software. It's not storage. It connects to storage. If, if I'm just an individual freelancer, then I can use uh, Wasabi, which is uh, their part of their plan. Or if I'm in an enterprise and I've got S3, no problem. You, you leave your storage alone and you just add Lucid Link. Yeah, Colin. So I, I agree with that 100 percent. I think, you know, when, when you look at the pricing that you're showing, you know, twelve dollars for someone just to say, hey, let me try this, you know, twelve dollars yeah. per terabyte. And what I tell a lot of people is if Colin and I are working on a project together, I know I'm going to end up copying this down locally anyway. And a terabyte or two is easily going to handle whatever working folder Colin and yeah. I are doing together. Some people might use this to say, oh, I always want to keep my media up there. That's fine. I think its biggest value is having a working destination on the cloud where everybody comes together. You know, maybe we've got, you know, Luis down in Brazil, who's our After Effects guru. And we've got Jason, who's our audition guru. We've got all these people contributing to an edit yes. all over the place. This is like, tools for the new work, right? Like this is the way it's done and it couldn't be simpler. And the pricing couldn't be more approachable. And as we already said, there's lots of different things around SSO and security. It is fully encrypted. Oh yeah. yeah. That's a whole nother type of conversation. And as you've already mentioned, I've got one customer in the media and entertainment space has over a thousand people on this. Wow. I have another <laughs> customer working on a main TV uh, show, which is really neat. 18 million files they've uploaded and they did a checksum with 18 million files down. And to me, that was like impressive because they could not afford for any one frame not to be where it, where right. it belonged. It is really yeah. a robust system. And for me, Colin, to get excited about storage, because <laughs> anybody that knows me, I find storing extremely boring. Yes. Uh, this is kind of fun to really sort of see where all this is heading. And I think with COVID, you know, hopefully behind us, but we, we know remote editing and remote work, we have to be able to oh, yeah. work this way. This, oh, yeah. this is, just, you know, puts it right on the forefront to say, wow, this is way. It, and by the way, now that I think about it, we'll be talking about camera to cloud soon enough. So that'll yes. be another session you and I ought to talk about down the road. But all of this cloud connectivity is gonna be, uh, you know, where we're headed with these new tools. Definitely. Well, thanks a lot, Dave. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I understand your. this is your last day before you're leaving on sabbatical. This is 25 years you've been with Adobe. 
Yeah, 25 years. And geez, Colin, I, I shared more than half of that time with you, buddy. It's been a great ride. Yeah. And by the way, Colin and I still talk nearly every day. So yeah. there's always some technology to talk about. And it's been fun to share uh, share my thoughts on LucidLink with you, buddy. All right. Thanks a lot, Dave. All right. Have a See great you later. Day. All right, just a couple of quick things before we're done because LucidLink is so simple, it's easy to miss the magic that's happening under the hood. Now, big data that we have to connect to, all of that data is stored in what's known as a flat file system, and we can't access that. So LucidLink adds intelligent metadata to convert that into what we're used to, which is a hierarchical file system. This is files and folders, so now it works like a desktop storage system. And then through compression, prefetching, and caching, multiple times of playing the, the timeline back, you're not going to have to move as much data. And even cooler than that, it's designed that the playhead dictates how much data is being uh, accessed. So just the blocks of data of where your, your playhead is, you don't have to pull the whole data for the whole timeline over and over again. Really smart. That means that you're moving less data and you'll get great performance. So no synchronization. It's streaming on demand of your data. It's the highest level of security and encryption. Um, there's no training needed because it works and acts just like the regular storage that we have. Now, you might be asking, well, who's this for? Well, I think anyone, especially freelance folks, could use this too. Uh, media and entertainment is a great uh, group of people to use this because productions aren't shot in one location. There's the uh, in-studio shooting, there's the uh, on-location, um, there's all the post-production facilities and any other data stores are, that are out there that have a whole bunch of media that have to be brought together. And they need it highly secure too, so that I mean, studios are, are really particular about security. So it's end-to-end -end encryption at the client level, no problem. Um, architecture, engineering, and construction, another group of people that have to work with mission-critical data, and they have to make sure they have the right latest copy. There's no synchronizing which one is this. There is one version, and everybody globally is using that version. Video surveillance is another great solution, an infinitely scalable giant storage bin of all video surveillance, again, completely protected. And the coolest thing is you can try it out for free. So I'll have a link in the description where you can go and sign up uh, and download this and try it for 14 days for free yourself. I'll also have a link to the architecture document that I access for a lot of this information. And you don't need to, I mean, if you don't care about how the sausage is made, then just install it and use it and be happy. But if you want to know more, um, then you can dig in. And if you need to send this to your boss who's making the decision or the post-production manager, get them involved because I think this is a revolution. We are going to see the way that we store, the way we access storage globally and securely is going to change. So it's simple, it's secure, it's global, it's scalable. Any application can use it and you can get uh, next to instant access to all of this data. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. Uh, we're getting really close to that magic uh, 100,000 uh, subscriber number. That would be wonderful to hit that soon. If you want to support us some more, you can do that on videoreveal.com. There's a, uh, a link there for you to donate once or monthly, anything you want. There's a bunch of free stuff and you can buy things like split screens and tickers and you can keep us uh, going here, help to keep us going here at Video Reveal. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to listen to my buddy Dave Helmley when he says, Colin, you gotta have a look at this so that I can tell you, you gotta have a look at this. This is Lucid Link. <laughs>